Welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you all for taking some time to be with us here today. Uh, we will get started in just one minute as we, as we know the drill here, wrapping up your last meeting and taking some notes or just rereading your co-pilot notes or adding to your CRM just so efficiently. Um, we'll give everyone a minute just to clean up there and, uh, and get with us. Um, as we do, if it's not your first uh, Cheryl webinar rodeo with, the, with Alex, myself and Jermaine, um, I love to throw some uh, or to learn a little bit from Alex outside of the Microsoft world and I hear Copilot 500 plus times a day. Um, something non Copilot, Alex always has some fun facts. So um, as we yep. just wait for others to join, go right ahead, sir. So today we're going to talk about branding and how branding is important. But you may think that we're going to talk about branding in the Copilot, you know, how the rebranding of Copilot has been happening. But no, we are really taking it way, way back to the late Middle Ages. And we are going to be talking about the potato. Uh, the potato was first introduced in the late uh, 16th century in Ireland, but did not make its way to the main continent in Europe until much, much later. And it wasn't until uh, Frederick the Great, the King of Prussia, who really wanted his um, population to have an alternative to wheat because he feared that, you know, there was going to be some famines and unrest. And, you know, he was actually right because the, the, the French Revolution was because no one actually implanted the potato. But whenever he first introduced it, he was like, this is going to be great. You know, it's, it's nutritious. It's for everyone. And the population did not like it. They thought it was bland. It was dirty. It was like in the ground. It didn't taste like anything. So they completely rejected it. So what he had was a, a brilliant idea in branding. And we can all, you know, kind of learn from it which is that he decided that instead he was going to make it the royal vegetable and that it was only going to be legally allowed to be planted in the royal gardens. And those gardens were going to be watched by guards. But those guards had specific instructions to be very, very bad at their job. So the peasants, when they found out that it was their, this forbidden vegetable growing somewhere that only the rich and nobility was allowed to have, they quickly learned to steal it <laughs> and then adopt it and you know, started cooking. And then it made its way to the population uh, because of the whole rebranding. So it is just a quick you know, kind of note that the same exact vegetable presented in a different way can make people very interested in it or just not want to touch it. So think about that when you're presenting Copilot to your customers. <laughs> I mean, now that we're talking about food, I'm going to have to join Alex on this one and say, you know, it's the same thing that happened with kale. If you were in a pizza hut before like 2012, kale was the thing that held up all the other things that people put in, wanted for toppings or sauces or any of that. And then all of a sudden, kale was the most popular vegetable out there that people were going to try and use. And it became so popular that it became too expensive for people to now put it mm -hmm. back in a Pizza Hut or a KFC under the previous holding of the other vegetables that they were going to do. So how funny is that one? It really is. And now it's, yeah, it's like a super vegetable and, you know, uh, all the, the health people, it's like, you know, this part of their staple of their, of their diet. But before it was just like, you know, the forgotten <laughs> yep so what we're trying to say here is that copilot is really really bad and really exclusive for super special people yeah you, you can't have it you can't it. have it yeah <laughs> awesome well these two uh smart gentlemen with me here uh alex and Jermaine. so uh, alex is our partner program and incentives manager um so all things uh the partner program and incentives, as you might have uh, inferred. Um, Jermaine uh, leads our modern worker dynamic practice from a sales side here, uh, my manager. So um, give really positive feedback uh, for me right after this. Um, then myself, modern work, uh, teams collaboration. I'm looking to help with anything we can really when it comes to modern work, co-pilot, um, and all the glory that Microsoft has to, uh, has to offer. Um, we also have two of our colleagues, so I'll jump back. Um, so Mike and Sam. Um, two colleagues that remains uh, on Jermaine's team here, um, alongside me in the modern workspace, some more technical, more security. Um, but uh, what we're trying to say here is we have you covered. Um, do reach out. We're, we're always happy to chat. 
for today. Again, not wasting too much time here. Um, this is what we're going to be looking at. So the partner program, uh, looking at some of the updates and changes that occurred recently um, or that will be occurring in coming months. Um, we'll be taking a look at promos and workshops um, as well. So different ways that we can monetize within the partner program of Microsoft resources and skilling. So not only how do you find this money and how do you leverage this money, um, but what tools your internal team um, or what knowledge does your team need to be able to go ahead and offer these solutions to earn those uh, set incentives. Um, as per usual, uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. Do use the chat. We, we had a similar session yesterday. It was great to have some interaction there. Um, don't be shy. It could be very serious and professional and business oriented or I'm goofy and aloof here. We're, we're here for all of it. Um, the slides and the recording will be shared uh, generally in about a week's time here. Um, and again, if there's any uh, any thoughts, even if you want to challenge anything we're saying or you have more specific questions, um, do so in the chat or we can always set something up and reach out on a one to one um, shortly hereafter. That being said, um, I will pass the baton to um, our good friend Alex here to take us through some of the updates um, around the partner program. Thank you very much, uh, James. And uh, much like yesterday, I'm going to try my best again to kind of speed run through the slides because it is recorded, because we will share the deck with you. If there are any portions that you want to, you know, kind of look at more uh, clearly, you will have that opportunity. And of course, any questions that linger, do not hesitate to reach out to our team because like I mentioned yesterday, I am no longer alone doing the partner center stuff. I do have a teammate named Rasha. She's amazing. So don't hesitate to reach out to us. So we'll be happy to help you with anything Partner Center related. So first things first, the MAI CPP did not change names this year. So yay. <laughs> as far as other, uh, other changes, we will see them later. But if you aren't a Microsoft partner yet, do sign up. It is completely free to do so. You will need to have uh, your information uh, reviewed and validated by Microsoft. But as soon as that is done, you will be able to purchase one of the benefits packages that are available to all partners. After that, uh, if you want to change the slide, yep, you will want to start your journey to become a solutions partner. So solutions designations is what replaces the silver and gold competencies of your, and they will allow you to get badges, to get ex uh, extra benefits and participation in the cashback program. Afterwards, we're not done with solutions designations. You will want to move on to specializations. This is where the real money is at. When you want to have, you know, uh, different initiatives, different projects that involve migrations, you know, from on-prem to the cloud, whether it's Azure, uh, Dynamics, Modern Work, there's over 30 different specializations. Here are just a few to give you an idea of how specific uh, those are. After that, one slide that I will spend just maybe a couple more seconds on the first big announcement, legacy silver and gold benefits will be retired January 21, 2025. What this actually means is that if your renewal date is prior to that date, you will be allowed to renew one last time. This renewal will be active for a full year. So let's say you're renewing in November, your licenses and everything will not stop in January. You'll have that full year until next November. But if your renewal date is after January 21, 2025, this is going to be your new deadline. Uh, so if it's in April or May next year, this is when you want to have reached solutions partner status in order to continue to get the cashbacks uh, that you have come to love and depend on. For active legacy uh, silver and gold partners, they will qualify for the cashbacks for FY25. This is the other uh, big announcement, which is all shown in the small print here on this slide. So again, if you uh, renew your legacy silver benefits uh, in October, uh, the whole year you will qualify for the cashback. So it's not going to stop uh, in January. And then moving on to benefits and incentives, you know, because what are we talking about when we're saying uh, benefits and incentives? So first we talk about the uh, incentives are also known as the Microsoft Commerce Incentives. It is the only active cashback program for partners in CSP. Uh, for FY25, which starts on October 1st, there are no changes as far as requirements are concerned. So you, your account must be in good standing. You must be enrolled in Microsoft Commerce Incentives. Like I just mentioned, Legacy Silver or Gold will qualify this year or one of the six 
solutions partner designations. It is still, um, the partner association is still the transacting partner of record, so it's still fairly easy to, rec to get recognized for cashbacks. And the uh, split is still 60% rebate, 40% uh, co-op. On the next slide, we look at the rates. They are, again, the same as last year, which proves that Microsoft wasn't giving an introductory period uh, to Copilot. It is a main focus. The accelerator of 7% on Copilot is back this year. All of the favorite uh, office suites that go with Copilot, like Business Premium, E3 or E5, also have accelerators. So those accelerators really, really start to add up. And then Jermaine will go into details a little bit later on that. The only thing I want to uh, kind of specify on this, in case you do see this information elsewhere, that maximum uh, incentive earning opportunity, also known as CAPS, you will not reach those CAPS unless you have more than 2,400 licenses on a single tenant. All of those maximums are the cashbacks and not the revenue. And it really is per customer tenant ID, per product group, per lever, per partner. So it is as granular as it gets. On the next slide, we'll see that for the net customer ads, it is the most generous cashback ever. It is back again this year, and all products on Modern Work will qualify for this, including Copilot. So if you had customer uh, customers on the fence about moving to the cloud or moving to Microsoft from uh, another uh, provider, now might be a great time to be very generous to move them over or be very aggressive. When it comes to uh, promos, uh, workshops, and product updates, we'll first look at uh, some of the workshops that you may see if you look at the Modern Work uh, Partner Incentives narrative. You'll notice there's a lot of uh, Copilot Accelerate, either like the Copilot Value Discovery, the Copilot Studio uh, Value Discovery. Those do pay quite a bit of money, but they're all for very large customers. So you're looking at plus 300 per tenant, sometimes plus 1,000 users per tenant. But some of our partners do serve that uh, clientele. So I've put the three main most common requirements uh, for partners to uh, to access uh, to those uh, workshops. And you'll notice that last line, the quality, partner qualifications, a specialization is required. So when I mentioned earlier that specializations is where the money at, this is your first example of partners with the specializations getting access to more money, more content from Microsoft for their customers. And then finally, the other biggest update that uh, James kind of hinted at, uh, it is going to be live January 22, 2025, so the day after Legacy Silver and Gold is retired. All of the modern benefits packages will be updated. This means that if you are a partner with a solutions partner designations for modern work, and you have that already active on January 22, it doesn't have to wait till your next anniversary or anything like that, you will get five seats of Copilot for Microsoft 365. <laughs> you will also get you know, about 200 seats of Microsoft Intro IDP2, which is, which is great as well. And if you have a um, business application solutions designation, you will get five seats of each of the three uh, Copilots for Dynamics that are available. And if you're already not listening to what I'm saying and looking just at that last uh, column, yes, specializations, again, is where you can get, you know, multiple incrementals of uh, Copilot licenses to use uh, internally. The last quick note on this, the partner success expanded benefits are not tied to any revenue or skilling uh, requirement. It is one of those three kind of modern action packs uh, that are out there. So one thing that I have been recommending uh, to partners that are legacy silver uh, is that you may want to combine your legacy silver membership plus the partner success expanded benefits so that you can have something close to the Modern Work Solutions Designations uh, Benefits Package. It is going to be slightly more expensive than just uh, the Modern Work one because you're adding up you know, two annual fees uh, together. But it is kind of a great kind of next best <laughs> option when you cannot reach solutions designations right away and you don't want to miss out on those IUR licenses. I think that's it for me. And then we're going to be moving on to Jermaine with some more accessible workshops uh, for our partners, I believe. Yeah, it's good. We wanted to dangle all the stuff you can't get to right away. 
and then we give you the good stuff you can get to immediately and just mm -hmm. kind of drive those those three home so that you get more in there and uh great session again as always alex and james wonderful on the slide movement buddy you gotta make sure we get this gone it's fluid very fluid um, for all of our partners and uh, prospective partners on online today, a uh, couple of really quick things around making sure that you know what kind of money is on the table. There's one thing to get money from Microsoft for having transacted your business already. But one of the things that we find a lot is you've got to make sure you're using the education and enablement funds to bring the knowledge to your end customers. And one of those is making sure that you've got an opportunity to sign up and get on board with incentives around the SMB briefings. And this is important because the only way to get into the program is you've got to apply into the program because it's managed by Microsoft Global. And based on the global uh, incentive scheme and the global program scheme, what we want to make sure you have is you can actually get that co-pilot be able to run smaller engagements with one to many so that you can do it via both in person and mobile. Um, uh, if you do it mobile, online, webinar style, it serves better for you because then you have an opportunity to run multiple within the same week, within the same month, and with those partners on there. And you want to be use the content and everything that Microsoft's already created for you. So when you do get the information from the slide deck later on post the webinar, make sure to take a good look at that and kind of move forward on having a little bit of information around getting Copilot ready, using SMB briefings, demonstrating that, and then earning incentives for Microsoft. So let's talk cash money. Uh, with the next slide, what we're going to be looking at here on the incentives promotion side, let's start with Microsoft 365 E3. Copilot's important. Microsoft's throwing a lot of uh, money at that and a lot of attention because it's trying to generate the interest. But let's not forget our hero SKUs and our enterprise SKUs within the E3, E5 business premium, making sure that we're utilizing what's available for those. Right now, we've got a promotion on with Microsoft that will end in their fiscal year, June 30th. You get, again, 15% discount on your ME3 subscription annual. Now you think you know what the cost of an ME3 is, plus your own discount as a partner, you get an additional 15% on that for that annual subscription. And it's only available to the new Microsoft E3 customers. So it's kind of your first purchase. You want to make sure you know that they don't have an E3 right now and they're net new to E3 when you want to transact that and gain that 15% discount on that uh, full annual license. When we think about that, Microsoft wanted to also give you more money for a longer duration. So if we go to the next slide, we're looking at eligibility for the E3 again. Alex? I think I have the, the, the same potential question that James might have had when he was kind of raising uh, his hand, maybe just to specify. Like, I think, I think I know the answer, but just in case other partners, like when we say the annual subscription, it doesn't have to be prepaid, right? It can be annual paid monthly. Yeah, so it's still, it is still, it's not a prepaid, it's your duration that you've put on the agreement. So it's still yeah. annual paid monthly, but the agreement term would be 12 months. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I, have, I have one more interruption here for you, Jeremy. Yeah, do it. Uh, <laughs> it was going to be just to clarify on that net new to E3. Um, so going from an O or an Office 365 E3 to a Microsoft uh, 365 E3 does count as a first purchase Correct. for this one. You have that spot on. So net new to E3, and the English language is funny. It could mean really anything. It could be net new to Microsoft, net new to E3 forever, who knows? But uh, it is worth it for the upgrade path because mm -hmm. the whole purpose of this is to support in going from the O SKUs or lower SKUs into the enterprise SKUs as well. And with that, that means now everybody will understand this one because again, expiration date, June 30th, 2025, Microsoft fiscal year end. And on the same E3 movement, if you wanted to have something for the duration of three years on agreement, you get a 10% on your licensing discount for that E3 over a three-year subscription. So eventually, when you take a look at this, it works out really well because you don't have to worry about renewals for three years. You don't have to worry about figuring out how to upskill and upgrade in that license bracket because as long as they add individual licenses and increase that bracket, you're going to have that 10% discount over that period of the agreement time. So thank you, guys. That was great clarification on that one. And we shall move forward to the one that everybody's looking for, Copilot. Everybody wants Copilot. 
co-pilot for the partner designations and incentives, as Alex explained earlier, January 22nd, 2025, if you have your partner designations in place, you will have access as a partner to the licensing. So you get, make sure to get your modern work track or your biz abstract going so that you have access to those. And in the interim, between now and then, a couple of quick things you can do is make sure that you get internally for yourselves, purchase your licensing and for your partners as well, you get a 15% discount. And this one now is the tricky one because it says annual subscription. To get that 15% offer, you have to pay for the annual subscription 12 months upfront. Copilot is upfront. 12 months. I know I can hear a bunch of hearts breaking online, but with that, you can also, when you think about it, if you're going to get that 15% off, you're looking at, you purchase 10 licenses, you're really getting a license and a half back in terms of cost to your, to, from the uh, overall cost for that year. So really good, really good discount. Promo ends at the end of 2024, calendar year, December 31st. So get in and get on board as soon as you can to claim those discounts. Uh, key aspect, something everyone's going to ask, you have to purchase 10 licenses. You have to purchase the 10 licenses in the total 12-month period. So for that 12-month overall, every incremental license that you add after your initial 10 purchase, you can still use the promotion and still get the 15% on those additional licenses throughout that expiration and throughout the program period all the way through to December. So you can add incremental, but your first purchase of 10 total has to initiate that offer for you in the system. And with that, because we like giving away so much money on Copilot, the next part of this is <clears throat> we want to add from a Sherwood perspective an additional 10% supported by Microsoft as well, is that if you buy, we call this one our 10 for 10, if you buy 10 co-pilot licenses a minimum, that will trigger that you get a 10% discount as a partner with SureWeb on that co-pilot purchase. So that realistically means you buy 10, you get one free in terms of purchasing that licensing going forward. The other part of that is this is stackable with that 15% that we just looked at. So. At this point, you're going to have 25% in terms of you purchasing a minimum of 10 licenses on that 12-month annual term paid up front. So you're looking at 25%. And now you think about that as you're really paying for 10 code licenses and getting two and a half back, which is great. Not, not bad at all. Now, extra benefits beyond that, the additional cash back when you do the Copilot briefing programs from Microsoft SMB briefings. You add the rebates from Microsoft solution designation incentives that Alex talked about earlier. You're stacking incentives on incentives on incentives. You can get really far down that pipeline with it. And as I like to make sure that we tell everyone, one of the cool things about going to the briefings and using the Microsoft incentives that they're now paying you to do, the job you were going to do anyway, Advertise to your customers, tell them about Copilot, show them what it's like, show them what business premium is and how it benefits their organization. You're going to do that anyway. So why not do it and get paid for it? So when we talked a little bit about our CSB briefings, we've got two programs that are open to you. Cloud Accelerator, you book an event, you have a customer, an individual company, upwards to 19 companies attend that training. You get paid $1,500 for that training by Microsoft Cash Money, USD, into your Microsoft account or your through your Microsoft Partner Portal account into your bank account. Now, when we say that, it's very important to note for this program, you must sign up with the Microsoft Global Programs first so that your tenant is prepared and then they can allocate the CSP briefings to you. If you put in a briefing where you've got 20 plus attendees from those various companies coming to that briefing, which can be fully virtual, you'll then be paid $2,500 per event that you host. Again, this is paid directly to you via your Microsoft tenant into your banking account, whichever you put in there. Now, for every net new customer partner that does a CSP briefing, you only get a maximum of six briefings in your first quarter working on the briefings program with Microsoft. So let's say you're super amazing, you've gone on and you've decided you're gonna do one briefing a week over the course of the quarter. You can then, after you've maxed out your first six, you can then use your co-op funds to get paid $1,000 per briefing after you've maxed out 
your CSP briefings on the Cloud Accelerator. So regardless of what you do, as long as you run the briefings, hit the content, have the attendees, you're going to end up getting paid at minimum $1,500 if you run one, all the way through to, I guess, depending on how many briefings you end up running and what's within your organization that you can actually fund. And it's good because this also applies to both your current customers and your prospects. So there's no distinction there that's required. As long as you can fill the seats, you'll get paid. So when you think about that from an incentives perspective on your core, you've got M365, 3.5%. You've got 5% in your tier one, 7% in tier two. Customer, net new customer added 15%. That's already 25 and three quarters percent cash back from Microsoft Copilot alone. And that has nothing to do with us giving you the 10 for 10% as a sure web partner. So you love that on top of it, and it's looking pretty nice. As a partner, you get a lot of incentives back for purchasing the licensing. And what I always wanted to recommend to all of our partners is don't take all the money for yourself. If you can get the Microsoft CSP briefing money coming into your company, take that and create your own incentive internally. Take the 10% from SureWeb and create your own incentive internally. Give something back to your end customers to help them to get on board. So, you know, launch your own 10 for 10, launch your own 20% discount on Copilot if they purchase 10 within, you know, a month of your briefing. Figure something out. If you can't figure it out and you want some help with that, talk to us. Our team is here to support with that. And we'll help you get on board with creating some form of go-to-market strategy around how you can create that promotion and deliver it to your partners, your end customers, and then use the money. Like give some back, use it, because in a year when renewals time come around, they're going to remember how well you treated them. They're going to be hooked on their co-pilot and their business premium and their security is going to be through the roof. You're going to be happy. They're going to be happy. And you're going to create that stickiness with your end customers. So we want to make sure that you get it. So M365 V3 in summary, 15% co-pilot promo, 15% from Microsoft, 10% from SureWeb, plus new customer ad percentages. You stand to make a lot of money just trying to go forward on Copilot. And it's going to be helpful to you. Let's not even get to those benefits. That's You're going to have to join a different uh, presentation from us to do that. With that, I think we are going to go over to maybe it's our buddy, James. Yeah, it's my turn. And um, so thank you very much. And we just put the up to 25% on the screen. But to Jermaine's point, there's a lot of money, never mind these services that get wrapped around that you get to offer and the enablement. Um, so yeah, so do uh, remember this slide in particular and, and start to run some numbers on your side. You'll see this is um, a pretty cool opportunity. Uh, we did have one question actually in the chat. I'll throw to you, uh, Jermaine. Um, if a client has five or six Copilot licenses added this year, can we add an additional four licenses to hit our 10 um, and get that 10 for 10 promo um, active? <sighs> the good answer here is no. It had to be net new 10 purchased within the promotion period. So if they even if they had 100 in there, it didn't matter. They'd have to do an extra a new 10 of set of 10 purchased in the promotion period for it to get to kick in the incentive on the back end. Great question. Yeah, yeah. Super cool. Yeah. I much, much appreciated. But them having Copilot already does not disqualify them from those promotions. They just have to make that 10 license purchase just as if they didn't have any Copilot. Correct. And they won't get the net new co-pilot uh, promotion, but they will get the 10 for 10 and they will get the co-pilot 15% uh, for 12 months because that one's not tied to net new. It's tied to 10, 10 plus. Cool. Awesome. Uh, awesome clarification, fellas. Thank you very kindly for that. Um, Jermaine uh, mentioned it earlier here in terms of spinning up your, your go to market or your, your GDM, as our, our marketing friends say. Um, we can definitely um, help uh, with that as well. Um, but essentially giving you the tools is what we like to be able to do. Um, and here is one um, the next few minutes, we'll just look at some of the resources from Microsoft and from ourselves in terms of getting ready more from a, um, a, a technological uh, readiness or a solution readiness, um, but definitely that go-to-market understanding what your strengths are, what the offer will be, um, all flows into that go-to-market. So. Um, what do we need to know and how can we help you get started? Um, well, uh, we'll look at a few of the different options here. This one in particular is, is quite interesting. It is a train the trainer event. So this is if you're gearing up to go and deliver some briefings, but you're not quite comfortable um, internally or you haven't had as much exposure or practice as you might like. 
Um, well, by all means, do join these sessions. Um, they're quite informative. I think we all follow them at, at one point here, or most of us on the call from uh, from ShareWeb here. Yeah. Um, but do go um, submit your colleagues to go. You can go and, and join these live sessions. Um, there's also some on demand as well. Um, so again, to start building that knowledge, the best way really is through practice. It is through uh, knowledge sharing and just playing with it, right? We're tech, so getting in and breaking stuff and finding out what doesn't work is a good way to figure out what really does. Um, so do that, but also um, added guidance is available to you from Microsoft, um, whether that be an on-demand content or a self-paced uh, mm -hmm. learning here as we have for Microsoft Learn. They do have a couple of co-pilot cool courses um, that are available. Don't let the one day um, put you off there. Most of you will, will, will crush that in a, in a, in a lunchtime, um, but it does give you a really good overview depending where you are in this co-pilot education. Um, and, and again, do leverage these uh, very, very free and wonderful resources. More free stuff and more value from ShareWeb. Um, so this one is particularly close to my heart. Um, Jermaine, Mike, and uh, myself will be heading out on the road in uh, November and December. I'm going to Calgary, Toronto, Irvine, and Dallas um, to present a one-day co-pilot masterclass. Uh, yep. So this will not be a very uh, technical focused session. We will absolutely dabble um, on the technical side as it all goes hand in hand. Um, but this is really that go to market. Um, how do we monetize? What is the opportunity really as opposed to just selling a co-pilot license and running yep. some briefings and all the cash back? Um, but why does this make sense for your business? And we hope to paint that picture for you. Um, so do join us if, uh, if you're in any of those towns, you can make it out there. Again, we'd love to have you there. Yeah, go right ahead and sign up. Uh, Anne-Marie was gracious enough to drop that in the chat. Uh, seats are limited. We're trying to keep the uh, group size to anywhere between 35 to 40 attendees maximum. Um, so anyone who comes in after that will end up on a wait list. Uh, that being said, we would love to have everyone who took the time to attend our webinars to join us at least at one of these, uh, because we can almost, I, I would say with 95%, confidence that once you come to the session and you leave the session after paying attention throughout the entire session you will come out of there knowing more and being more comfortable with figuring out what to do next from a licensing security onboarding perspective for copilot but also generating and building that repeatable revenue stream for your company going forward and how to go out there and get it done so come come visit us you know it's your time, of course, so you'll get out of it what you put in. So come have some fun with us and uh, enjoy this new thing. Like it's it's pretty great. Yeah, and 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 as much as as Jermaine, Alex, uh, and 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 Mike, and, and to myself to 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 varying degrees, um, we'll definitely have a lot of value to uh, to provide. Um, I think what was really fun about the last sessions we ran was the networking that was done within those. Um, it is sharing ideas with like-minded MSPs. Again, these are decision makers and business owners. Um, all looking to really understand what we can get out of Copilot, what it really means. Um, so you'll hear from us, absolutely, and, and I really do believe in the content we have, um, but you'll get to interfa interact with uh, with your peers um, as well. And and we learned a ton from that session, I could say personally, so I'm um, really exciting for, uh, for, for anyone who can attend. Um, we do these webinars, we do uh, various presentations, uh, if ever you'd like to see some of the stuff we had been up to, or if this is really your first exposure to Copilot, um, we do have a five-part series, um, a webinar series that we had done um, just over the last year in regards to Copilot in particular. Um, so do go and check that out if you really want to ramp up and then um, come join us in person when we get to the Calgary, Toronto, Irvine, or Dallas. Um, we also have some great contact there in regards to our Azure practice, our dynamics um, business as well. So any of the conferences, webinars, et cetera, that we do, um, as much as we can record, we'll put them in here so you can always refer back. So it's not just a um, attend a live session, but we also have an on-demand component to what we get to do. Um, so again, do educate yourself. If you're looking for a read on a long, uh, for, for something to listen to on a long drive, um, by all means, uh, we'd love to uh, we'd love to be there with you. It's my radio, my radio announcer voice there. I'm just rehearsing. Uh, in regards to uh, resources, so uh, again, we have a partner toolbox for those of you who have not had a chance to take a look. Um, please do. Again, lots of marketing collateral in there, um, pitch decks, battle cards, and, and on. So anything to help equip you um, along this journey. 
itself also has a couple of really, really um, interesting tools. Probably one of my favorites and, and maybe the best kept secret in, in my opinion for Microsoft partners is Microsoft Lighthouse. Um, so uh, if this is the first time hearing about Lighthouse, please do um, go and uh, and take a look. Uh, it's absolutely worth your time. Um, and it's free. <laughs> So we love free stuff, right? So we're trying to give you lots of money on the front end, and we're trying to help you find more. And um, we get here, uh, thank you so much, uh, Jermaine. Uh, uh, so you can follow that link there to get more information. Um, but essentially, being able to see all of your tenants uh, for a bird's eye view and be able to dive into each of the tenants to create baselines and deployment plans to ensure that everyone is following suit and you have, um, again, a very scalable, a very repeatable. Um, business model and Microsoft does have the tool um, to do so. That there's currently a, a debate on the MSP subreddit about you know uh, SIP versus Lighthouse versus some other uh, tools to help for partner center management, and the consensus tends to be M365 Lighthouse plus something else if you need it. But th there's never anyone that says, "Oh, just use something else." Everyone believes that there's at least some value in what they need to do with M365 Lighthouse. And again, it is free. So just have that as well, but do look at those uh, other uh, services. I did an onboarding uh, this morning with a partner. There's lots and lots of literature uh, out there about what Microsoft 365 Lighthouse can do now. And as I mentioned yesterday, if you've heard Microsoft 365 Lighthouse more than two years ago, and you took a look and you're like, wow, this is bad. Look again, <laughs> this is the rebranding of the potato. Um, this is, <laughs> A, a much, much better tool. Like back, uh, back in the day, you needed to have everyone on business premium, everyone with all these services and all that to even be able to see the tenants. But Microsoft has made a lot of upgrades on it. You'll be able to see all of your tenants. The only requirement is to have those GDAP connections uh, with those tenants. And if you struggle with any part of that process, yeah. reach out to us. We can help. So definitely from a managing what is, um, but also looking forward again, going to market, what does Cobalt mean for my business and how can Microsoft help? Um, well, sales advisor, so a part of Lighthouse um, is the answer to that, right? So we can look at renewals, we can look at um, customer upsells who might be um, a prime candidate for, for a business premium upgrade, for example. It's not just going to be, um, well, because Microsoft says business premium is the way to go and that's the reason. Uh, Microsoft will actually give you the collateral It'll give you the signals it use. It says, hey, this customer tenant who's full of business standards, um, they're running four devices a piece. Well, maybe we get some into it on there, right? So it's going to have a justification, not just a go hunt and sell you fives everywhere, but really something um, fairly grounded as it gives you that. It'll also give you uh, some of the supporting collateral to go with it. Um, and most importantly, as you saw, we're walked across the screen backwards here, um, unlocking co-pilot opportunities. So those who have a reasonable secure score um, and security posturing, well, those would be the candidates that would be, um, that would have a higher propensity for Copilot itself. So uh, if you're not sure where to start with Copilot, you're not sure which customers um, would get the most value or where they are in their journey, well, you can start here. Um, once again, as we'll say maybe 10 more times in, in the session today, we're here to help. Um, let us know if any part of this is challenging whatsoever. Again, we're gonna help you connect some dots and help you move forward. Um, another tool, I'd imagine many of you have seen this at some point in time, but Microsoft Transform um, is a pretty vast uh, collection of Microsoft resources. So everything from what is the market saying and then through the work trend index and um, very uh, and some surveys and, and studies uh, delivered by Microsoft, potentially funded by Microsoft. So take that with a grain of salt, but all of it leading towards there is a great opportunity and this is without doubt. Um, but how we can capitalize and maybe what levers we can pull in front of our end users to say, this is a good buy because of X, Y, or Z scenario. Yeah. Um, and again, we're not looking to just push the Copilot license. We want to do it properly. So what is the road to Copilot? What is that strategy? And that's more of what we'll break down in detail uh, through the masterclass. And in the Transform site, there's resources around technical upskilling, what paths you need to do. And it puts you right in the right place where you can have just click download go there's lots and lots of good information there yeah so absolutely that that uh the skilling um absolutely something that we we, we thoroughly encourage for, for everyone to take part of 
Um, and then even going to market resources, again, these are going to be pitch decks, click throughs. Um, you can see the FAQ called out here as well, but um, it's really going to give you really from A to Z um, in the way that it's, or A to Z, depending where you find yourself. Um, it's going to give you the tools and the resources based on where you are in your journey. And again, we'd love to partner, you, partner with you on that um, and share any type of insights that we have. Um, last but not least, um, do visit our website as well as there's some great info um, and even the blogs. I say even the blog style is historically not a big um, believer in, in, the, in the blogs as a medium, um, but incredibly practical for very short reads. You have a couple minutes of downtime. You just want to stay current. Um, our team does some really good work in terms of putting out relevant, um, uh, relevant data and um, often, and, and as for me here, you'll see a lot less fluff, a lot less of the best case scenario, um, but a little bit more grounded in reality as we like to be. So um, again, do uh, do treat yourself to uh, some of our quick reads and, and some of them get pretty in-depth as well. Awesome. And, and what would a presentation be in post copilot or PC, I guess, here um, without leveraging uh, the tool. So we actually had Copilot summarize the key takeaways from this presentation. Um, do uh, read it, but essentially the Microsoft Cloud Partner Program um, is here. The name hasn't changed. For once, uh, we still know what it's called, and there are even more benefits um, on the way for, for any of you who have, uh, have achieved these designations or renewing your competencies. Uh, promotions are a plenty. There is a lot of room for you to be aggressive where that be on the back end incentives, on the front end promos through briefings and workshops. Um, Microsoft is throwing um, everything but the, uh, including the kitchen sink uh, at Copilot here, both to incentivize you to go and incentivize your customer. Again, will incentivize by saying, I offer Jermaine, Alex, Mike, and Sam uh, up to attend the co-host and in your, your briefings as well. So anyway, that we can help. I can't commit to, to any of their schedules, honestly, but uh, uh, anyway, that we can help throw it at us again. We I, I was privileged enough to give one yesterday. Um, we'd love to be a part of this um, eventual success for you. Um, and last but not least, we can't lead if we don't know um, if we don't know where we're going. Right. So um, understanding the solutions, understanding the the, the product, understanding the um, the trajectory or the path that you can lay out um, through the masterclass, through level up, through learn. Um, through our knowledge network and on and on, there are a lot of resources available. So if you're not yet uh, informed with those or familiar, um, do so. If you can't find them, reach out. Again, if we can be part of that success. Um, it's really what we're here for. Last call for the master class. Seats are limited, so do uh, leverage a link that Anne Marie was kind enough to share. Um, do register. We are asking for it to be one attendee per organization, as again, seats are limited. So. Unfortunately, that the whole team can attend. However, they can um, do send one per uh, event. That we'd again, we'd, we'd really love to have you. Um, and we do expect more dates to come um, in the new calendar year. That being said, thank you all for uh, your attentiveness. Let's take a look at the uh, chat and Q and A. And I think we're pretty much up to date. Um, so do uh, grab those links. Uh, we'll be sharing this all uh, at a later date, nonetheless. Um, but do grab the links that are there. If anyone has a last minute question or comment, um, again, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and if not, well, then we'll simply wish you a wonderful uh, back end of your day here, and uh, we hope to connect with you all real soon. Awesome. Take care, everyone. Thanks for attending. Have a Thanks, good day, all. Bye. Cheers.